Good evening and welcome. Tonight's story is called The Collar by Hans Christian Andersen. There was once a grand cavalier whose whole outfit was a boot jack and a comb, but he had the handsomest collar in the world, and it's the collar that our story is about. Now the collar was old enough to think about getting married, and as it happened, he arrived in the wash along with the garter. My word, said the collar, why, I've never seen anyone so slim and so smart, so soft and so adorable. Might I ask your name? I'm not telling, said the garter. Where do you belong? asked the collar. But the garter was very bashful, and thought this rather a strange question to answer. I expect you're a girdle, said the collar. One of those underneath girdles. I can see you're useful as well as ornamental, madam. You're not to speak to me, said the garter. I don't think I've given you any occasion to. Well, when a lady's as pretty as you are, said the collar, that's occasion enough. Please keep away from me, said the garter. You're too much like a man. Yes, and I'm a grand cavalier, said the collar. I have a boot jack and a comb. Now, of course, that wasn't true. It was his master who had them, but he was boasting. Don't come near me, said the garter. I'm not used to it. Prim and proper, said the collar. And then he was taken out of the wash. He was starched, hung over a chair in the sun, and then laid on the ironing board, and along came the hot iron. Madam, said the collar, my dear madam, I'm getting all hot. I'm being done brown. I'm losing my creases. You're burning a hole in me. Oh, will you marry me? Ragtag, said the iron, riding proudly over the collar, for she fancied she was a steam engine going on the railway to pull carriages. Ragtag, she said. The collar frayed a bit of the edges, and out came the scissors to clip the frayed edges off. Oh, said the collar, I expect you're the leading dancer. You're good at stretching a leg. It's the prettiest I've ever seen. You're quite without an equal. I know that, said the scissors. You deserve to be a countess, said the collar. I have nothing but a grand cavalier, a bootjack, and a comb. I wish I had a country seat. Are you proposing, said the sister, said the scissors, and she was so cross she gave him a whacking big clip, and he was turned down. I suppose I shall have to propose to the comb now, said the collar. It's remarkable the way you keep all your teeth, madam. Did you never think of becoming engaged? Well, I should have thought you would have known, said the comb. I'm engaged to the boot jack. Turn down again, said the collar. And so, as there were no more to propose to, he had no more use for proposing. Time passed, and the collar found himself in a box at the paper mill. The rangs were holding a party, the finer ones for themselves, the common ones for themselves, just as it should be. They all had a lot to tell, but none more than the collar. He was a proper boaster. I've had an awful lot of sweethearts, said the collar. They never left me in a piece. Ah, but then I was a grand cavalier, well starched. I had both a boot jack and a comb, which I never used. You should have seen me then, seen me when I lay on my side. I'll never forget my first love. She was a girdle, so delicate, so soft, and so pretty. She threw herself in a wash tub for my sake. Then there was a window, a widow woman, who got all hot for me, but I left her go to back. I left her to go black. There was the leading dancer. She gave me the gash I still bear. She was so passionate. My own comb was in love with me, and lost all her teeth of a broken heart. Yes, I've seen plenty of that, but I feel most sorry for the garter. I mean the girdle, that jumped in the wash tub. I have a lot on my conscience and it's time I was made into white paper. And he was. All the rags were turned into white paper. 
the collar becoming the very piece of white paper that we have here, and on which this story was printed. And that was because it boasted so dreadfully about what it had never been. So let us bear this in mind, that we don't go behaving in the same way, for we can never be really sure if we do that we won't also land up in the rag box and get made into white paper and have our whole history printed on us, every secret bit of it, and have to go about telling it like the collar. The Collar by Hans Christian Andersen. Thank you so much for listening. Good night, everybody.